Well, hello there. Welcome to wild, wonderful, wacky, Sin City, Las Vegas, Nevada. A place where people drink, they gamble, they do all kinds of adult activities. In one way, you'd think it's as far from sort of a Disneyland or a Disney World as you could possibly get. But surprisingly, there are actually a lot of connections between Disney and Las Vegas. Just to give you one example, look right over there across the street at TI, formerly Treasure Island. This place was built during the years where Las Vegas was making weird experiments in building more family-friendly entertainment. And although they've done their best to cover it up with country bars and over across the way, a Mexican restaurant called Senor Frogs, as you can see, the theming here at Treasure Island originally was pirate combat. This whole lagoon was a giant free spectacle-like show right on the Las Vegas Strip where these two pirate ships would be full of pirate-themed cast members all doing a crazy mock battle right here in front of Treasure Island itself, during which one of these ships actually full-on keeled over and sank, or well, I guess I should say, sank into the waters over here. It was a big production. It was the brainchild of none other than billionaire Steve Wynn, who would later go on to build these over here. And if you're going to build a giant pirate show complete with fire and cast members and giant sinking animatronic ships, who better to turn to than Walt Disney Imagineer Bob Gurr. That's right, none other than my good friend Bob Gurr, who designed the People Mover, the Autopia, helped design the submarines at Disneyland, and of course many attractions at Walt Disney World. He is the very one who came here to work with Steve Wynn, transport these giant pirate ships right down Las Vegas Boulevard, help install them, and begin the giant animatronic pirate battle and sinking ship show out here. That's just one connection. In subsequent years, of course, many different people who've worked for Walt Disney Imagineering or for the company in other ways have come out here to Las Vegas and worked on various shows, various giant projects, and sadly now the pirate ships no longer sink. We got a walkway through the lagoon, Treasure Island builds itself as TI, and Senor Frog is looking down here with his weird bubbly eye patch and little hook hand at the pirate ships. It's a far cry from the giant spectacle that it used to be, but it's still a Disney World and Disneyland connection right here on the Las Vegas Strip itself. And what I plan to do today is go to an even bigger, even bolder, crazier Walt Disney World connection with Las Vegas that actually has another connection to my good friend Bob Gurr because in addition to the other things I mentioned, he also designed the very first Disneyland monorail, the first daily operational monorail in the Western Hemisphere. And what many people might not realize because you can't see it from Las Vegas Boulevard itself is that Las Vegas and the Strip have their very own monorail. Now, the reason I said most people don't know the Las Vegas monorail exists, it's the same reason that it's always going out of my head and that I've never actually seen it up close or ridden it, even though I've known about it for years. And that is the fact that the Las Vegas monorail has no visible presence right here on the strip itself. Instead, it's tucked away behind the east side of the strip, behind all these casinos over here, just at the back of them. If you're just walking up and down the strip, finding a station can be kind of difficult, but a keen-eyed observer will notice right here at Harrah's, there's a little sign right down there that actually says Monorail Center Strip Station. All I know about it is that the station itself is actually behind the buildings with the casinos and stuff, so I'm guessing the farther back we go, the more likely I am to find a sign. All right, look at this. In a hotel, a sign for a monorail. Where the heck am I? Walt Disney World? Okay, that took forever to find, but I finally did it. I found the monorail platform. Got my ticket right here on the phone. It was less than 15 bucks for the whole day. And now I'm cruising in for my first look at the Las Vegas monorail. Up close anyway. Yes, yes. Shoot, look at the size of this place. It looks like an Amtrak station or a Metro line station in a major city. This is a, uh, Quite the operation over here. Okay, southbound, that's what I want. There's a northbound side and a southbound side. Two sets of monorail tracks. Oh my gosh, here it comes. Look at that. Notice how familiar looking those beams are. That is because it's the exact same type of beam used at Walt Disney World. The same type of carriages and even underneath the exterior, which admittedly looks a little bit different, the same 
kind of monorail, the Mark VI monorail by Bombardier Transportation. The same thing that they're using at Walt Disney World today. Weird, look at this. The carriage is even closed. Notice you can't walk through. That's the one thing that separates this from being a true all wag style monorail. Well, look at that. It's a very familiar shape. Oh my gosh, por favor, manténganse alejado de las puertas. This is so weird. I've never ridden a monorail, I think, anywhere outside of Disney World and Disneyland property. And look at this. You got amazing views of the high roller right here. I mean, there is a little scrim over the window. Whoa, to make it look fancy. I think we're almost already to the next station. Trains are arriving every six minutes, they said. This thing is incredible because it runs for 3.9 miles, now, almost four miles Caesar's behind the Las Vegas Strip. Oh, we're already at the Caesars Palace Station. This monorail continues southbound. Next stop, Horseshoe and Paris Las Vegas Station. As you can see, there are multiple stops along this line, all the way from the Sahara over here in the north to the MGM in the south. Let's pop out here for a second and be a weirdo and sort of watch the train roll away behind these Verizon ads there. It's very futuristic looking. Cosmetically, it's very different than the Walt Disney World monorail that we know and love, the Mark VI that's out there today. But underneath the hood, it's pretty much exactly the same. And in fact, these trains here were built by the very same folks that built the Walt Disney World monorails of today. But the connection goes much deeper than that, as we'll discuss. Look at this, it's the eighth wonder of the world, the backside of Las Vegas. I mentioned it's 3.9 miles. It doesn't really match up to the 14 miles of track that you have at Walt Disney World. But still, this is monorail mass transit writ large. I'm surprised how huge and on what an industrial public transportation scale this monorail exists. This is the train going the other way. We're not going this way, but check that out. Look at that thing. That is cool. Like I said, the cabin looks a little bit different, right? But you can see the shape, very, very similar to Walt Disney World and of course there's four cars on each one and I said the cabin it's not really a cabin we were in one of those lead cars and like I just showed you and like I think we'll be able to peek through this door right here in a second up there there's actually no monorail operator oh well, you can't get in there after all but there's no monorail operator in there it's a fully automated system that was actually fully automated long before Walt Disney World's monorail system became fully automated, which of course it is. They still have pilots sitting in the Walt Disney World monorails in case of accidents or emergencies or anything like that, but they no longer have pilots sitting in the Las Vegas monorail. And oh my gosh, here it comes. The Las Vegas monorail is coming the other way. Here comes our train. Boy, that's six minutes. Went awful quick. All right, look at that. You can actually see the last station we were at from where we're standing. Right now we're behind the Flamingo, so we're across the street from Caesars Palace. You can see the sphere from over here. There's actually some pretty cool views from this station. And here it comes. Here comes that monorail. Look at that thing. Look at the size of it. Look at the sleekness, the sound. Weird. I love how it says Android has arrived on it. So there's advertising wrapped on it right now because CES is coming up. But uh, I was gonna say, I love how it's wrapped on the outside to make it look even less like uh, the Disney World monorail at the moment, and of course, the Android has arrived because it is automated. Look at this. All right, hopefully, we're gonna get this whole thing to ourselves for a moment here. Come on, close door. Dude, this is incredible. The same sort of width, the same sort of dimensions in here. There's a little more space, a little bit less uh, plush seating. There's no seat right in the middle of the actual carriage or car or whatever they're called. <gasps> but look at this. The door closed. You know what that means? It means I got the whole monorail to myself. I got the whole dang monorail to myself. I got the whole monorail to myself. I got the monorail to myself. All right, look at this. Here we go. We're going to go up this track. We're turning now. This is so exciting. I don't like the uh, Google Android scrim on here. The advertising is kind of ruining the view a little bit, but you can get a sense. You can get an idea of what it looks like from up here. Man, this thing actually rocks and rolls pretty crazy. I mean, like, it's not very smooth. It's a, it's a wild ride when you're standing here not holding on to the bar as recommended by the voice on the speaker. Oh, look at this. 
They're watching us. Anyway, as I mentioned, 4.9, no, 3.9 miles of track over here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven stations, seven stops along the way. And this isn't actually the original portion of the monorail. When the monorail was opened back in 1995, it was originally just a shuttle between two casinos, the ones that are now at the end of the line, the MGM station and what was then the Bally's Casino Station. So originally, it wasn't this big sort of mass transit system all along the strip that it is today. You know what, I'm gonna hop out. Ugh. And I'm guessing that there was a lot less traffic back then because back then, like I said, it was only going between two casinos and today, it gets an average of 30,000 people a day on the monorail. Now, obviously, today is not a 30,000 person day, but this does run all the way up towards the Las Vegas Convention Center where they have huge conventions like CES that I mentioned before. And of course, during crazy sports weeks or concerts at the Sphere where they're planning on building another station, but we'll talk about extensions to the line in a little bit. Uh, it can be a lot busier than it is today. So other days, you have virtually no one. This is so weird. Look at all the space here. Man, I wish I brought my rollerblades. All right. I'm just kidding, I don't own any rollerblades. Wow. Anyways, as you can see, we are now at the Horseshoe slash Paris Las Vegas station. So we're behind uh, what's now the Horseshoe, but was Bally's. And back in the day when it was Bally's, this was one of the original stops on the line. So the next section of track that we go on is the original section of the track for the monorail between here and the MGM Grand. Man, look at that. Like I said, that is one familiar beam. This is so crazy because if I wasn't hopping off at every station like a, like a weirdo over here, it would only take you 15 minutes to get from end to end on here, that four mile run, 15 minutes. And there are portions on this track where that monorail goes 50 miles per hour. Now I know the one at Walt Disney World can go up to 75 miles per hour. And I assume that is the uh, same thing here in Las Vegas, of course. Because after all, as I mentioned, the Walt Disney World monorails of today and these Las Vegas monorails, the Mark Sixes, were built in the same place by the same company Bombardier, okay, here it comes. You know, I'm thinking because that used to be Bally's right there, now it's the Horseshoe, this building here. Uh, maybe that was the original station for the monorail when it came here, the original version of the monorail. And I told you, there was a deeper Walt Disney World connection. Well, if you were here in 1995, 1996, riding on the original Las Vegas monorail, instead of today's Bombardier Mark VI, you would have had the old Mark IV style monorail. And those weren't built by Bombardier. Those weren't built for the Las Vegas monorail. Oh no. Those are original monorails that drove over this very same Our section of track. Wait a minute, drove? Is that the correct term? That went, that traveled, that uh, conveyed humans along this very same section of track 30 feet above the street were actual former Walt Disney World Mark IV monorails. Literally decommissioned monorails from the theme parks themselves. Well, from the resorts. That's right. The original Las Vegas monorail was born using Walt Disney World monorail vehicles. And boy, oh boy, was that a fast train right there. This little section here is just under a mile between the old Bally's Hotel and the MGM Grand, which is still the MGM Grand today. It's probably the fastest section of the route I've been on so far. I mean, we did start in the middle, but this thing is booking it, man. Look at the pool. All right, this is the final stop, the end of the line, going this way anyway. Pop out and take a peek at this station. Last stop southbound. All passengers right. must exit the monorail. You heard him. All passengers must exit. Time for us to get out. Really, there's actually a sort of staff or a person, a security guy, whatever you want to call him, standing there making sure everybody exits the monorail here at the end of the line. That's the only human staffer I've seen at the monorail this entire way. Okay, we're going to go down and see what this station looks like from the outside. All right, here we are. We are at the MGM Grand. You know what's crazy is when this first opened back in 1995, uh, the inaugural run of the monorail, when it got here to the MGM station, they actually had the Wizard of Oz characters here to greet it and sort of christen the monorail. And, oh, uh, and now the MGM Grand Casino no longer has Dorothy or Toto or the Wicked Witch over here to greet us, but that's okay. 
We don't need any more wicked witches in our lives anyways. Right, guys? Hey, Brad Garrett. Dang it, I was trying to find a way to go out and see that monorail station from underneath to show you the trains on the beam overhead, but it looks like we gotta go out through the casino and all the way around behind it. They don't want you exiting back there. They want you exiting on the strip and going to go gamble. Boy, this is confusing. I keep getting lost trying to find the monorail and then trying to find my way away from the monorail and then back to the monorail. Oh, okay, there we go. For future reference, the uh, pathway down to the monorail is actually right here to the right of the Golden Lion as you enter the MGM Grand. Weird. And there it is. There we go. That's the shot that I wanted to see. Look at that monorail. Dude, this is so exciting. I'm not gonna lie to you. I'm actually having a lot of fun doing this monorail mission out here, but crazy to think that back in the day, back in the 90s, actually from 1995 until I believe 2002, the first of seven years of the Las Vegas monorails operation, you would have actually seen a Walt Disney, a bona fide Walt Disney World monorail right up there on the beam, right here to the right of the entrance of the MGM Grand. And it wasn't David Copperfield that made the original monorails disappear. What happened was, is that uh, it was originally just the shuttle between MGM Grand and Bally's down there. And then they decided in 2002 to finally kick it up a notch and turn it into a viable public transportation system. That's when they began expanding it to that four mile length all down the sort of center of the Las Vegas Strip. Oh, look at that. There you can see that same train. It's just turned around back there on a little bit of an extension where it flips around to go back northbound up the strip again. Weird. Now down here at MGM, we are at the southern terminus of the line, but there have been plans over the years to extend the monorail beam all the way to what's now the Harry Reid, I think, International Airport down there. That's more or less like kind of gone by the fell by the wayside after COVID and stuff like that. And there were plans to extend this monorail all the way northwards as far as the stratosphere and maybe even old Las Vegas one day. They keep putting it on the table and then they keep going bankrupt or having uh, different problems. Of course, the pandemic was the major problem. It shut everything down and they finally transferred ownership of the Las Vegas monorail from a private company uh, or from a private organization to a, uh, so I think the Las Vegas Convention Center and Visitors Bureau, I think they're in charge of it now, but this is crazy. This is the first public transportation system uh, built since World War II without using any public taxpayer funded dollars. It was all paid for obviously at first by the MGM Grand and Bally's. And then as it was expanded, I think they sold bonds and different kinds of stuff. And then I get fuzzy on the story from there. I'm mostly concerned with the fact that this used to have actual working Walt Disney Rail monorails, full on monorails, the cab, the cars, everything actually from the Florida parks. And for years, there was actually one of the original Walt Disney World monorail uh, vehicles sitting out here once it was decommissioned from the Las Vegas monorail out in the desert in front of somebody's home in Sandy Valley, not far from here. In fact, I'm told if you saw it from the right angle, it would look like it was just sitting completely out in the desert, like completely abandoned, but somebody owned it. It was in front of their house. It's out there for years. And in fact, I had planned on filming it many times as I was out here in Las Vegas, but I thought, you know what? I haven't even ridden the Las Vegas monorail. I got to get into that first, do a whole video about that, do a whole filming experiment. So I'll save it, I'll save it. And then I found out, actually, the day before my friend Adam went out to go check it out himself, uh, they had moved it. It is now gone. It is no longer sitting out in the sands of Nevada. And the rumor is it's out in Southern California, somewhere under wraps, uh, getting refurbished by that same owner. Who knows? But I'm just going to put this out there right now. If any of you guys know where that monorail went or where any of its brothers went, those original Walt Disney World monorails, hit me up because I will absolutely love to check that out. Wherever it is, wherever it may be, I would rush over to see. Look at that. I mean, what the heck? Where the heck are we? Again, Walt Disney World walking under monorail beams. It's weird because being born and raised in Anaheim, very, very, very near to the Disneyland Resort, I am very familiar with walking under monorail beams or driving next to them, you know? So to me, it's actually kind of normal. Like, of course there's a monorail here. Why wouldn't there be? Oh, look at that. It is tripping me out though, actually being here and seeing all this and just thinking of those old Mark IV monorails that used to, <laughs> They used to be cruising around back here behind these casinos. 
Disney World monorails. Weird. Wait a minute, I shouldn't say that out here. There's a better spot to do that back inside, almost to the station. Weird. All right, here we go. Back up to the monorail. As I mentioned, the ticket cost me $13.45, just under 15 bucks for a 24 hour period. I think you could buy longer passes to get a bigger discount, like if you're gonna be here for a week. And dude, if you're staying at one of the casinos that's actually on the monorail route, you're basically on Las Vegas' version of the monorail loop, which is pretty darn crazy. Okay, we're gonna get back on the train now and head northbound which is gonna be cool. We're gonna see all the views, see what we can see from it. We're behind most of the casinos, but still, there's some stuff to see. All right, here it comes. Yes! There are actually nine of these, nine monorail trains running at any given time, and they can hold up to 222 people per monorail. So you actually can transport quite a lot of people per day on the monorail if you know, it's packed if it's busy out here. You got the back of the MGM Grand over here. You got some parking lots, you know, not too impressive at first. Also, by the way, I just realized it's the first time I've actually sat down on the monorail all day. You got some pretty good views of some of the newer buildings out here. Some views of the strip out the other side when you're between casinos or when you're running over the streets like this. It's pretty cool. It's uh, literally a different side of Vegas than I've ever seen before. Uh, there's the sphere out there, the bubble, the LED pimple of Las Vegas. And oh, people are still, I can't believe people are swimming out here. It's freezing. It's like 50 degrees right now in the middle of the day when the sun's shining. Weird. All right. Looks like we're coming up to the next station. Whoa. All right. I'll show you a closer look of the route there. MGM, Horseshoe slash Paris, Flamingo slash Caesars, Harris, the link, that's where we got on. And then the Convention Islam Center, Westgate, and Next the Sahara is. are all on the route. The trains only stop for a second, so you gotta hop back on really quick if you pop out to look around at the stations themselves. I only hopped out here at the former Bally's Casino, which is now the Horseshoe, just so I could see if I can get out on the street and get a better view of the monorail actually traveling around. This is weird, this is one of the original hotels that would have been, well, hotels and casinos that would have been connected to the monorail itself. Oh, by the way, it's a sometimes vlog, yeah, yeah. It's a vlog that happens sometimes, welcome. Oh, that's funny, look at that. It's a cool arcade right there. It's funny because my little wifey, Allie, when she was here with me, uh, she uh, did a slot machine for the first time in her life. She put in, I don't know, I, we only had like 10 or 20 bucks to put in. <laughs> she spent the money and she was like, oh, this isn't fun. Because she, of course she lost. So she's like, this isn't fun. Chuck E. Cheese is more fun than this. At least you get a bouncy ball or something, you know. Look at this, by the way. Like, not far from the monorail in here, inside the horseshoe. Oh, fabulous uh, Las Vegas welcome sign. That is cool. Now this is actually a much better spot to get your picture taken than the actual welcome to fabulous Las Vegas sign out there on the road, which you can see in the Muppet Room video I did. I did a video of the whole crazy Muppet Room, the world's largest private collection of Muppet replicas. There was a cool Muppet show uh, backstage replica set at this guy's house in Las Vegas. Go back and check that out if you didn't, uh, didn't see it. All right, I think we got a side entrance here so we can uh, get a peek at the monorail from the ground. Yes, there we go. We actually popped out right underneath the monorail tracks and here it comes. Okay, look at this. There are 48 tires under each train, I think. And uh, look at that. They are actually hovering on that beam on just regular rubber tires, like the kind you'd find on a car or a trailer or something like that, inflated rubber tires. And then they've got rubber tires on the sides to be sort of the guide wheels on the beam. Pretty cool. Oh, here comes the other one. Yeah, I looked it up. Eight wheels, so two under each thing. Hold up the weight of that guy, but there's 48 uh, per vehicle, per train in total. Dude, that is pretty crazy. Look at that thing cruising by up there. Keeps you off the streets, away from the bus shelters, away from uh, whatever's going on down here at the liquor store, uh, away from all the people trying to hand you pamphlets and get you to go to places where people take off their clothing. You don't want to go there, you. As Kevin McAllister once said, no clothes on anybody. Sickening. It's cool because you can actually see it just there if you zoom in. Uh, sitting at the station right underneath the high roller, the big wheel over there. And we're about to cruise right by it 
on the monorail. All right, here it comes. Jumping back on board for that closer look at the view from the monorail. Look at this, we're surrounded by monorails. Mm, scoop it, scoot, scoot, scoot. It's weird, because as far as I can tell, size-wise, it's pretty much identical. Oh, here we go. We're going over that same section of track now from the air we just saw from down below. Anyway, carriage-wise, they seem like the same size, the same dimension as the Walt Disney World ones, but of course the Walt Disney World ones have a door here and a door there instead of one door in the middle like this. Look at that. Look at the shine of the high roller up there. So they are a little bit different, but essentially under the hood, like I said, they're the exact same. They are technically Mark, what is it? Mark six monorails, just like the ones at Walt Disney World today. Dude, I cannot believe that you used to be able to ride on this thing in actual used Walt Disney World monorail trains. I remember I was telling you that there was one uh, decommissioned one sort of out in the desert in front of somebody's house. If you actually look at the satellite view, even at this moment, even today, you can still see that thing laying out in front of that dude's house. Man, I wish that dude was a friend of mine. I could have partied on the monorail. Maybe they sold it. I know it's supposed to be being refurbished, but sort of a tragedy. A monorail out in the middle of nowhere would be pretty cool. I would just build a little hut there, you know, take $5 donations, keep an eye on it, don't let it get graffitied, but that'd be awesome. Just coming across a monorail, abandoned in the desert. A dream shattered, my friends. Oh, look at this. We got the whole monorail to ourselves once again. Awesome, okay, here we go. This is it. This is the big old wheel. We gotta stand clear of the doors. Oh, we got the uh, the high roller and the sphere in the background right there. Beautiful. Oh, dude, I, you could not get me on that thing. No stinking way. Woo. Boy, these stations are close together. I just love monorails. I love trains. I love walking around. Actually, I was gonna say, the uh, true Alweg monorail system, I believe, you like Seattle Airport or something like that, you can walk from car to car. This, as you can see, is just like Walt Disney World where the cars do not connect. You cannot walk through all the way. Anyway, there's a lot of information about this monorail online. There's a lot of information about other monorails. It turns out there are quite a few monorail nerds out in the world, train nerds, transportation nerds, and stuff like that. So you'll probably find out all kinds of information. In fact, maybe one of you could tell me where, if there are any more decommissioned monorails that used to be on Las Vegas monorail, or what the technical difference is between the pure all-way system and the system they're using here currently and the system that they're using whoa at Walt Disney World today look at this I love seeing the curvy sections of the track that's what makes it so fun it's not just like a straight link like you would think it would just be a straight line between all these casinos and stuff like that but it's not look at the way it curves and it winds between various casinos like I said you get a little backstage oh my gosh look how close we're getting to the sphere I believe we're gonna pass right by it. And speaking of line extensions, that's the most likely new extension is adding a platform, a train station for the monorail, a monorail station rather, at the sphere itself. Because the monorail really runs right next to the sphere. As you're gonna see in a second, it gets awfully darn close. Look at this, we're rounding this bend right here. There's the winds staff parking. And look at that. Look how close we are to that thing. The sun is sort of blocking the view and the stupid scrims on the window, but we are right there at the entrance to that thing. Look at the size of that guy. That'll be a whole other adventure, a whole other separate exploration. All right, now, as you can see, we're behind the wind and the Encore, big old country club back there. So we're making our way down this rail pretty darn rapidly. I guess Steve Wynn must have been jealous of the monorail they built. Probably didn't want his casinos being associated with any old dirty Disney World monorail or something because it goes all the way around the wind properties over here. Look at this. I'm weirding out all the passengers in here with me. They have no idea who I'm talking to. They don't know that you're in there. They don't know that we're secret best friends. All right, here we go. We're going to make a big left turn. Whoa! A big left turn right up here on the beam. Oh yeah, that reminds me of what I was saying. And it's interesting that it's not just a straight line. It kind of makes it more fun that it winds in between all this stuff. And as you can see right down there, straight ahead is the Westgate. 
That's the former International Hotel. That is the place where Elvis Presley used to live and work when he was in Las Vegas. He would do the shows there in the, what is it, the International Ballroom, and he would stay up in a giant 5,000 square foot suite that no longer exists. Although there is a new 15,000 square foot suite right in its place. Look at that. There you have it. There's the strip out there. You got the new Resorts World Casino. The new Fontainebleau Casino is right up here. Where are we now? I guess we're almost to the West Gate. Weird. Now, I only come out here usually when I get invited by somebody who's got a block of hotel rooms. Oh, look at this, the convention center. There's the convention center right out there. So as you can see, this is going to be a very busy, busy place when CES officially starts uh, coming up here during this week. What was I saying? Oh yeah, I usually only come here when I'm invited by somebody who has a block of rooms or I have some kind of business to be out here. I never stay on the strip unless somebody invites me or something like that. And uh, so I spent a lot of time wandering around the day sort of on my own when I'm not hanging out with whoever brought me. And this is a lot more fun than walking up and down the strip because these casinos are big and they are a lot farther apart than you would think they are. Right. I am popping out, just check it out. Okay, this is just the convention center station. All right, we're not at Westgate yet. I'm going to pop back in. Whoa, just in the nick of time. Ooh. There we go, there we go. There's the West Gate out there, the old international, like I was telling you, where Elvis used to be. I am going to hop out there just to sort of check things out, but it's not the end of the line. There's one more stop still past that. Look at this. We just went all the way from the MGM Grand. If you look on a map of Las Vegas, that is way down to the south. We're now passing the giant Las Vegas Convention Center. Look at the size of that thing. We are now passing the whole area where CES is going to be. We are pretty far down the strip. Like I said, four miles total, 3.9 miles from end to end. And uh, there are casinos and attractions and bars and whoa, restaurants and apparently arcades, battle bots, I got everything down the entire length of it. Okay, here we are, look at this. We're at the West Gate. I can see the station right up ahead. Again, I love how curvy this is. I love that it's not just a straight shot along the backs or along Las Vegas Boulevard. It would be cool to have it running down the strip itself in a way, because you'd see it, more people would probably take advantage of riding it. It's kind of awesome the way it snakes around behind them. It makes it a lot more fun and challenging to ride. Got to have steady feet and make sure to hold that handrail. All right, look at that. Look at this. Look at how easy that would be. If you're staying all the way down at the MGM Grand and you're a big Elvis fan and you're like, man, I wish I could see the casino where Elvis used to go and sing and do his thing. All you have to do is hop on the monorail and geez, you know what? That probably was only about seven minutes from the last station we were at to here. Now look at this. Within 15 minutes, you're going to be all the way at the other end of the strip. Crazy. Okay, I just checked. It took about five minutes from the last station to here. And that was the longest sort of run over there to the convention center anyways, uh, without an exit, without a stop. That was a pretty long, pretty cool ride. So if you just want one ride from point A to point B, you just want a little time, I would definitely recommend going from maybe the Westgate or the convention center uh, down to the next stop because that was a pretty good run. And bam, you're right here at the Westgate Hotel. Look at the size of that. Elvis Presley was here, my friends. Of course, Elvis has left the building now, but he was here. I did actually film a video about that a long time ago, about Elvis being here at the Westgate. Uh, and check this out, I'm gonna head on inside. And I was just thinking that if you want a sort of family-friendly and budget-friendly day in Las Vegas, something you could do with the kids, you could sort of build a monorail challenge where you go to each stop and then go out and look for a free thing like a statue or a monument or some kind of cool thing like that and here at the westgate that for sure would be coming to get a selfie with this guy the king elvis presley look at that there he is in his full las vegas outfit he's got the, he's got the, the flared pants right there he's got the sort of bell bottom actually he's got the rings on there you can kiss the royal ring if you want i wouldn't recommend it not without a lot of purell on it first and look at happy 89th birthday to elvis presley oh my gosh it is literally elvis's birthday i had no idea happy birthday to the king come shake his hand for luck give him a little kiss on the ring happy birthday there elvis you know it's weird Statue's pretty normal, like life size. Look at the size of his noggin compared to the shoulders and the legs. I was thinking about this too. I filmed uh, Madame Tussauds here once. 
and they've got skinny young Elvis, and they've also got, you know, fat Elvis. And uh, the fat Elvis is super accurate because they put him in, you know, with the exact measurements of his clothes and everything like that. He was really never that fat. He was like a pretty thin guy. He just carried it all up here, you know, like me. I just carried it all on my front, but he carried it all on his head. That's super cool, man. Super fortuitous. How about that? Elvis's birthday. What a place to be. There's a lot of other Elvis memorabilia in here because this is where he did all those crazy shows out here in Las Vegas. Look at this. They've got a little preview center with a photo of Elvis and Muhammad Ali right there. You know what other place had a preview center? Walt Disney World. We right, had to avoid pointing the camera at the casino floor. But look at this in the back of the West Gate, right over here. See the Manilow gift shop. Barry Manilow is performing in the International Theater back here. This is where you would have come back in the day to see Elvis, who was living upstairs. He'd cruise down, probably had some private elevator somewhere. I've never actually been inside of the theater. Never gone to see Barry Manilow, uh, who's been performing here, I think, for quite a while. Oh, look, there's Frankie. Frankie Valley is going to have some shows. Uh, so I've never actually been in the theater. I've never managed to, to make them or convince them to let me in there during the daytime like this, you know, when there's no show going on. But it's on my bucket list to sort of get in there. Just, just, just sort of feel the room, feel the vibe. You know what I mean? All right. This isn't about Elvis. This is about monorails. Happy birthday, Elvis. All right, I'll tell you guys something. When I'm here by myself, uh, ever since the casino started charging so much for parking, you know, I typically just park somewhere and I just walk everywhere. Even when I'm invited here and somebody puts me up in the hotel and all that kind of stuff, I usually travel around the Strip or everywhere in Vegas on foot, unless I'm going to Fremont Street or someplace like that. But when I'm with those same friends at night, they have a car, they've got a driver, they can just go from the front of the casino to the front of the casino, sort of where the valets are or where the VIP parking is or whatever. So I've kind of lived in both worlds, as it were, when I'm out here. And I kind of think if you're going to these particular casinos that the monorail is actually touching or connected to, this is a lot faster than even waiting for a valet or getting in your car or doing anything like that. So even if you can afford all the valet parking, if you want to go to the Westgate anyway, or any of the casinos that we've seen so far, the Horseshoe and the MGM Grand, this is 100% the way to go, for sure. All right, we're gonna hop back on the monorail now. Well, we've got one final stomp on the line and then the mission will be complete. Look at this, the escalator's broken. Look at the sign. This escalator is refusing to escalate. This has been escalated to the engineer who is on their way up or down to check it out. I like that. Got a sense of humor, the Las Vegas monorail. What are you, a clown? These are the jokes, kid. All right, here we go. <laughs> I just remembered all the way up these steep flight of stairs. They also have, they also have monorail, or uh, not monorail, elevators. I can't think. Stairs. I got a heart condition, don't judge me. Oh, should've took the elevator. I was originally, obviously, mostly interested in this from like sort of a Disney history nerd perspective that the monorail is sort of related to the, uh, you know, first cousins or siblings really with the monorails at the Walt Disney World Resort. And of course their connection to my friend Bob Gurr who designed the original 1950s monorails at Disneyland and then continued to work on them all the way up to the Walt Disney World era. And even though um, monorails like this were built by other companies and the ones at Walt Disney World now were built by Bombardier, which I don't think is building monorails anymore, by the way. Um, they still have a lot of technology in them that was developed and worked on by my friend Bob Gurr. And of course, like I mentioned, Disneyland had the first daily operating, <coughs> excuse me, whoa, daily operating monorail in the Western Hemisphere, as I like to tell you, on the little spiel that plays over the speakers. And so a lot of the testing and the data that those companies use to build and construct new models of monorails or new marks of monorails came from Bob Gurr's original monorail. So that was sort of my first reason for coming and checking this out. The only reason it's lasted so long, the only reason I'm still running around doing it, is it turns out it's a lot of fun riding this monorail. And yes, in case you were wondering, the song from the Simpsons episode has been in my head all day. Okay, so Westgate Station, Sahara Station. That's the last one, the old Sahara Casino with access to Circus Circus, Fremont Street, uh, Sahara Las Vegas, and the Strat. And then one day they're planning on continuing the line 
to the north, you know. And at first I was like, ah, you know, they always do those weird public transportation ideas. They always turn into boondoggles. They waste a lot of money, you know, a lot of light rail projects in different places where it's mostly a car city. And by the way, Las Vegas is also planning on adding an underground light rail system throughout the Strip. And that, for sure, is one of the reasons they probably haven't poured any more money into the monorail as of late. But I would still like to see the monorail extended because this is freaking awesome. It's fun. It feels like I'm going on a ride. In fact, I paid 15 bucks for it, so it's an attraction. And now, well, you can see it, but there it is. There's the monorail coming down the elevated track over the West Gate entrance. It's cruising over here. And I was just thinking, if you pay, average it out to 15 bucks, 222 people can fit on each train. Average of 30,000 people a day. They must make a heck of a lot of money off this monorail. I have no idea how expensive it is to operate, but they must be making a bundle. So I started thinking, man, how much money could Disney make if they started charging to ride their monorail? And then I thought, wait, don't say that. Don't give them any ideas. You don't want to add that to Genie Plus. Wow. They want every dollar they can lately. <laughs> Once again, I got the whole monorail to myself. Whoa. Por favor, manténganse alejado de las puertas. One more ride, gang. One more ride together. Then I'm going to take it all the way back uh, to, to where I started and walk my happy little feet back to my hotel for the evening. The sun is now getting low in the west and kind of high bucking the view there a little bit. Look at this. Wow, a lot of space over here. See, there's the stratosphere. And then, can you see it? There's the Sahara down to the left. That is where we are going. Now, I know at one point, ridership was also diminished on the monorail when the Sahara, for some reason, was closed down and it wasn't the Sahara for a while. And I'm still confused as to whether it's still called the Sahara or it's called SLS or whatever the other name was or whether that's another place. I haven't spent any time over here in this section, although I have been in the stratosphere just once. Uh, I went up to that restaurant, which not, I didn't eat anything, but I was up there with some people and then people jump off the roof on those cables like bungee jump from the roof. Okay, here we go. What is this right here? I have no idea. There it is, the Sahara. And this is it, our final now we're right monorail Sahara, station. Las Vegas station. And this our little uh, stop, bridge to get over to the other side. I don't know why I'm still looking this way. I got to exit, got exit behind me. All right, time to exit the monorail. Goodbye, new friend and yet old friend. I'll say hi to Bob Gurr for you. We. Oh, bizarre. Look at this. Past the station. It hooks over this way. And look at that little bar. That must be sort of the roundhouse for the monorails over there. That must be where they switch tracks to head back down the other side of the line. And that looks like some sort of maintenance shed or something like that. So that's pretty cool. Over here on the Sahara side, you've got the infrastructure for the monorail. I wish I could meet someone who, who works on these trains and kind of get a get a tour in there maybe one day hey, if you know someone let me know all right well for once we're not taking an escalator down we're taking the stairs up and going on a sky bridge i guess i'm just peeking through the window here for one last look at the monorail before i say my goodbyes all right let's get out of here oh wait a minute this is weird i was just coming over here to the escalator to go on that sky bridge you got another monorail parked down here in addition to the one we just got off of that went over to that barn they got monorails backed up for days over here. Look at that. Man, don't you wish it would back up and just give me the perfect the perfect picture right there? Oh, if only. Just back up a little bit. The Las Vegas monorail. Look at that. That's a glorious, fun pick right there. Maybe this should be on the monorail challenge, huh? Whoa, look at that. That's what I'm talking about right there. Dude, people freaking hook themselves onto cables and swing down off of that thing. Like all the way down to the ground. There's some kind of outdoor thing here. There's a little roller coaster thing on the top, or there was forever. Freaky, dude. I never want to go back up there again. Who knows if I ever will? We'll see. I love how they call it the Strat now instead of the Stratosphere. That's so weird. Like, that makes a big difference, you know? I guess it does make a little bit of a difference. You know that they've changed it if they call it something else. But come on, it's still the Stratosphere. We all know what it stands for. All right. Up the escalator. Say farewell to the monorail trains. I was just thinking it's too bad the monorail is directly underneath our feet and not uh, over to the side, over off the side of this bridge, because that would be a pretty sick spot to get monorail views. By the way, I've noticed every bridge in Las Vegas, every street bridge, they've covered them with these like plexiglass things. That's not nearly as fun when you can't look down there and spit your gum out on somebody's car. Oh, maybe that's what happened. People were spitting their gum out everywhere. That's my story and I'm sticking to it. I'll tell you what, there is a point on this bridge 
where you actually do get a pretty darn good view of the trains coming in and out of the station over here at the Sahara. So it is a good spot for monorail watching, as it turns out. And I'll tell you another thing, another thing I really enjoy about the Las Vegas monorail versus the Walt Disney World monorail, many times I have even just been pointing an iPhone to take pictures of the monorail. And if you're kind of near the security area or anything like that, they kind of wig out a little bit like, what are you doing? That's transportation, no pictures or whatever. Um, not all the time, but every once in a while at Walt Disney World. And yet here I am in Las Vegas, Nevada, all these casinos, all the money in the world around here. I'm running around, jumping on and off the monorails. I'm filming them, pointing the camera. <laughs> I'm doing all kinds of weird stuff. Nobody questioned me once. Nobody hassled me. Nobody harassed me. Everybody was friendly. Like, cool, you're filming the monorail? You know, so that was kind of another additional bonus. All right, I'm just going to come in here to the Sahara. First time I've ever been in here and walk out the other side just to see where we landed uh, here at the end of our monorail journey and uh, take stock. Looks like we got another broken escalator over here, so we're cruising down the stairs. I love all the weird sort of mid-century stuff. I know the original Sahara or Sahara opened up in the 1950s, so it's a Las Vegas institution. Just never been here before. Oh, look at that. The monorail ticket can get you discounts for stuff. That's good to know. All right, here we go. What in the world? Did the Beatles stay here at this hotel? Weird. Yeah, sure enough. They're all pictures of celebrities. At the Sahara, look, there's Elvis. And he has a cake. How'd they know it was his birthday? Weird. This place is really nice, dude. Holy cow. I don't know what I was picturing, but being down here on the other end of Las Vegas Boulevard, like by the Strat and stuff, I thought it was gonna be a lot more seedy. This is really, really nice. Dude, good thing there's no Elvis machines or I'd be tempted to pull out a dollar and try my luck. But one, I don't have a dollar on me, not in cash anyways. And two, I don't wanna lose a dollar. All right, here we go. Here is the exit. Ooh, the door is opening for me with magic. Oh. All right, Las Vegas Boulevard slash the strip is right here in front of the hotel. Let's see what kind of views we've got from here. All right, well, there's the new Fontainebleau Casino right there. That is one of the newest ones in Las Vegas. I haven't been inside yet, but I hear it's really, really nice. The Resorts World is just here, being blocked out by the power of the sun. And then what do we got over here? Look at that, the Strat, right in walking distance and the big world's largest gift store over there, Bonanza Gift and Souvenirs. I'm not sure it's actually the world's largest. In fact, I really want to come and do a sometimes vlog, a little more unedited stuff over there let me know if you enjoyed this format sort of a hybrid between our usual random land adventures and the sometimes vlog which is coming back on this channel do me a favor if you enjoyed this or if you've enjoyed any of the 11 years we're about to hit 11 years of content from random land check out the links below check out the patreon if you want to keep the show on the road for 2020 Four. Oh boy, I stood there. I'll be back to expand on this, but Happy New Year, since I didn't get a chance to wish you guys a Happy New Year with a New Year specific video. Although I did put out a video of the first year of Random Land. So going back more than 10 years to the very earliest days of anybody filming out there at Disneyland and some of the other early adventures that we had. I'm gonna cruise down. I'm gonna take a little walk down here, check out the inside of Fontainebleau. And then of course, I'm gonna get back on the monorail and hotel and sleep well before I head back to Southern California. Really appreciate all of you guys who have been watching. There's a ton of new adventures that you might not have seen from the last couple of months of 2023. Thanks for coming with me. Thanks for sticking with me till the very end. You've done your duty. You know what that means. You can go home and sleep well. Bye-bye. Yeah.